Welcome to the Change Within Podcast. My name is Gerard Uselli, and we are on episode 51. This has just been incredible that we got to half a century, one episode at a time, understanding the perspectives of change by every person that I've spoken to throughout the country. And this person is no exception to the rule. Let me introduce to you, Danny Ray. Danny, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Gerard. This is awesome. Absolutely. So something that I like to ask all of my guests, especially on the first question, what was your childhood like growing up? My childhood growing up, uh, in hindsight now looking at it, very blessed. Uh, Not in material wealth per se. Um, However, it was just rich with love and experiences. And I'm so grateful to have had them. Uh, It's not that there was an absence of struggle, because of course, everyone has their own personal struggles, right? But um, I can say that even though I came from a divorced home, my parents had separated when I was very young. uh, I gained a lot of knowledge and experience with both dynamics. And I was blessed in the sense that I've always had my maternal grandparents who were with me, um, which they no longer are, God rest their souls, but they were such an active part of my life. So what I felt that I had missed in my childhood with having two parents in the home definitely was supplemented with them. So all in all, I really can say that, you know, being in the places that I've been, I was born in Burbank, California, uh, spent a lot of time in Staten Island, then got moved out into Perth Amboy, New Jersey, getting all of those different um, cultural environment experiences has definitely shaped me to the person I am today. And I'm very grateful for that. Kind of an off-winded question on this one, because I noticed this when I was working in the city at the time, I was dealing with clients from California and their pacing in terms of conversation is so Mm -hmm. lax that it threw me off guard as far as (laughs) how they are, as far as just continuing a conversation. And I'm going like pretty much over the speed limit and they're driving like under the speed limit that way. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. West Coast life is definitely different. Definitely more lax. I wish I would have spent more time over there. Maybe I would have gotten to slow down and kind of embrace life a little bit more. Um, I feel like on the East Coast, we're always in a high paced, high rush type of energy. But all in all, yeah, it's definitely beautiful over there. Definitely. And as you have so much variety to offer in entertainment, tell me about your first experience performing in front of people. So my first experience performing in front of people was actually very impromptu. And what I mean by that is I was at Orchard Beach in the Bronx. I was five years old and my father was dating someone at the time who was very, very heavily involved within the Bronx community. And it just so happened that she knew a lot of the people that were there because they would do concert series quite often, salsa series, I'm Puerto Rican. Um, So there was one particular artist whom I loved uh, since his first album that my father introduced me to. You may know him, goes by Mark Anthony. And um, somehow she was able to get me there on stage. And it was in front of thousands and thousands of people. Um, And I was able to sing one of my favorite songs off of that album at the time. And it was just an amazing experience. It was just like, whoa. And all I remember, it's funny, a lot of people ask me, you know, were you scared? Did you feel any type of fear and it was like no none at all it was just getting up there as soon as the mic hit my hand it was the show was on you know and one thing that my mom had always taught me which we laugh about years later is how at the end of the video which is available on YouTube I just bow and I'm just like it's the most random thing like why would this little five-year-old girl just bow after the performance it looked like "Eh, that's it this is what I was meant to do and you know from that point forward even though it was such a a high adrenaline experience. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. So that was my first experience. And it's kind of been, I've just been trying to go at it ever since. I haven't hit that that milestone again yet, but it's coming. Well, I'll say this kind of like as my own hot take, because as someone who has performed in front of people myself, I'll say this to anyone just as like a preference. I think it's always better to put them on the stage, give them the pedestal up front, because then it's going to pressure, challenge, and have them embrace what's in front of them at that time. Because when you have a smaller intimate setting, I feel like just in 
my opinion, I'm sure people are going to be different from it. I feel like you kind of get more intimidated by the people that you know, presumably, that are going to be in the mm-hmm. crowd versus having strangers kind of perceiving what you're bringing to the table. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like when there's so many faces in the crowd, it's hard to single in on one or two. You just see it as the overall bigger picture. And it kind of just takes all of your fear away because it's like, well, I don't know what any single one of them are thinking, nor was I even thinking of that at the time being so young. So it was just, it was a great experience. Definitely. Absolutely. And how did singing like come into your life even before that first performance? Uh, Singing was always present. Um, I was blessed to have a very musical family. Uh, My grandfather was a self-taught musician and vocalist, and as was my aunts, my uncles, my mother. So I always had music present in the house. It's just one of those things. Oddly enough, um, my voice was actually one of the things that my grandfather noticed about me first. And because I had a I mean, I still have a deep voice, but when I was younger, I had a very, very deep and raspy voice. And my grandfather was like, oh, this is a singer. And I was just like, you think? And he would just put me by his piano bench and just start playing notes and having me play along. And before you knew it, that was it. I had been bitten by the music bug and spent a lot of time singing with family, singing at churches. And it was just a part of my upbringing. There is just something very quirky about doing anything with your family in that retrospect. It's such a different vibe than like strangers or friends that you would collaborate with. Even just like at weddings and you're just dancing with like your family. It's just such a different like perspective on it. It's so like interesting to me. Not only that, but I feel like um, with family, voices naturally mesh well. So, for example, if you're doing like a two or three part harmony or four part harmony with your family, you'll notice that the sound is just richer and and kind of purer because the the voices are similar, hereditarily, you know, speaking. I don't know if that's a word, but I just made it up. (laughs) Look, this is bound to make history, so I'm glad you did it for our podcast. (laughs) Thank you. So what I wanted to also ask is, being that you've been immersed in doing interviews on your own, working for different agencies, hosting your own events, do you feel like it's a little bit more natural for you to try new things? That's a good question. It really depends on what it is. Sometimes I can get intimidated by certain things. Like, for example, I'm not much of a dancer. So when people ask me to, you know, do you dance or would you want to go out dancing or take a dance class? I'm, I'm a little like apprehensive because like I'm kind of clumsy and I have two left feet sometimes. <laughs> but when it comes to other things, like, for example, acting, uh, I was casted into a web series, which I'm super grateful and blessed to be a part of. Um, that kind of came more natural to me. Um, I'm not sure if it's because the character was based on a lot of who I am as a person, or it's just because I really enjoyed the idea of getting to portray somebody and something else other than myself. That's a very good take on it. And also as someone as myself who puts myself out there, how do you deal with failure when it happens? Oh, that's a great question too. Um, In the past, I haven't dealt with it well. I could tell you that. Um, transparently speaking, it's something that used to get me down for like weeks upon weeks at a time. As I've gotten older and learned to develop and after speaking to other creatives, right, who give me their hot take on how they deal with failure, I've learned to accept it and embrace it and understand that every time I fail, I'm getting that much closer to becoming successful. And without those failures, um, I wouldn't appreciate the success you know, that I'm destined to have because I don't stop trying. You know what I mean? Um, So it's definitely something that I'm learning to embrace more in my adult life and to get over quickly because it's bound to happen. We're human, right? No one and nothing is perfect. So just taking it in strides and just trying to remind myself that that moment of failure doesn't define me or my life. One of my favorite coping mechanisms to deal with failure, and especially if people notice it, all I have to do, take a bow and just say, you're welcome. Yeah, (laughs) I'm really good at the bowing thing. So I'm going to have to apply that to my everyday life. It's like, (laughs) yes, that was me. And it's all good. (laughs) 
if there's just something where you're always like, no, that's exactly what I was trying to do. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's so, awesome. I'm going to use that. What do you want others to remember you for? You know, when I read this, when I thought about this question, because I knew it was coming, I was just like, oh, this is like, this is a tough one. Um, and I think it's because it forced me to face um, the concept of mortality, right? Like nobody lives forever. So what is it that you really want to be remembered by? And one thing I want people to remember about me was that I was 100% human like everybody else. And that I that I had dreams and goals and aspirations and whether or not I made it, I know that at least I put myself out there and I continued to try, you know? Um, and I know people don't like the word try because it's like, you don't try, you just do. But you have to make the effort first before you do anything, right? So I just want people to just remember that I did feel the fear. I felt the anxiety. I felt the rejection. I felt the failure sometimes, but I still did it anyway. And if I can do it, they can do it too. It's just a matter of pushing yourself and constantly working to break those barriers that are built in within us innately. I think also adding to your point on this being such a tough question, because it does reveal the sense of mortality. What inspires mm -hmm. me to ask that question is when my grandpa passed away, maybe seven years ago, it was one of those moments for me where I really cherished his legacy as a person. And yeah. it's one of those ordeals, like let's say when you're at a wake or at a funeral and the emotions are always at a more uh, downward spiral. I always yeah. kept, I always kept trying to make like the spirits up. I always tried to yeah. keep people's spirits going. And that was my first figurehead for me to kind of embrace more of the glass being half full. Yes. Same here. I, I lost my grandfather uh, this past October and I took it really, really hard. As a matter of fact, I kind of just put everything that I was doing to a screeching halt while grieving. And it was just like, I was telling a friend earlier, it was like almost like an identity crisis that I was going through. It's like, who am I? What am I? What am I doing? You know, what is my purpose? And his life and legacy really reminded me of just how blessed I am and how I have to live my full life and come through as my authentic self. So I, I totally relate and understand what you mean by that. Definitely. And as my final question, of course, yeah. I like to ask all of my guests on this one as well. What is the biggest change you want to see for yourself? The biggest change I want to see for myself is an increase in faith and fearlessness. You know, I feel like there has to be a certain level of faith that you have, whether it be within yourself or with who or whatever you believe in. Um, so I'm aiming for that and increase the faith that I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for a reason and that there's something that I need to do. And fearlessness, um, I need to see an increase in that as well, because sometimes I could still try to talk myself out of things or the, the, the spirit of like self-doubt comes and it's just like, you can't do this or you can't do that. or You're not good enough for this. So I want to get better at silencing those voices with faith and fearlessness. And just remember that I'm here for a legitimate reason. And whatever that reason may be, I don't want to see life pass me by without fulfilling that. I think when you're connected with a higher power, you're also able to really embrace the spirits that guide you through your hurdles and able to get through yeah. the obstacles that go throughout your life. I think when you have that guidance to you, a, every, not to say that you dismiss other people's opinions or what they say to you, but you kind mm -hmm. of look past what they say and then take the good things for you to move forward with. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's really about the bigger picture, you know, what you see for yourself at the end of the day, because opinions are everywhere, but they don't pay bills. <laughs> What a great way to end this episode for episode 51 of the Change of Him podcast. So for those who want to check us out but have never had the chance to before, you can please check out Change of Him podcast, Anchor, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you very much for joining me today and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much, Gerard. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Bye-bye.